You mentioned UFOs. I've got to ask you about this, Chris. Now look, I studied mechanical engineering at MIT and back in the day when people would talk about UFOs, I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we've seen fighter pilots talk about these things, multiple ones, credibly. I think the Department of Defense has recognized that there are these objects out there. You're a former fighter pilot. You've listened to these guys on the Joe Rogan experience, et cetera. And you've I've been on Joe Rogan. You've been fact, on Joe yeah. Rogan as well. And I'm sure you've listened to some of their testimony in this, and they're not the typical UFO person that we used to encounter when we were younger. These are, like I said, pilots who are witnessing things that are hard to explain with Newtonian physics. What is your take on some of these sightings and spottings? Again, especially as your perspective as a former pilot. Sure, well, I, you know, I try and be evidence-based. And um, so I, I started flying when I was 15. I was a glider pilot, then a powered pli pilot, then I joined the Royal Canadian Air Force. I became a jet pilot, then a fighter pilot. And I was a combat fighter pilot in the Cold War. And so I served with a bunch of other combat fighter pilots, you know, kind of the best of the best of the, of the pilots at the time. And then I went to the U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School, and I trained as a test pilot with the U.S. Air Force with an amazing group of pilots and, and accomplished people. And then I did a tour with the U.S. Navy as a test pilot, flying with that huge cadre of incredibly accomplished people. And then I went to the Canadian Space Agency and NASA and served with all the astronauts of the world for 21 years, people who had not only been fighter pilots and test pilots, but also astronauts going above the atmosphere. And my father is an airline pilot, and both of my brothers are airline pilots who have tens of thousands of hours flying airplanes up in the high atmosphere. And not once out of all of that experience have I spoken to one person who's seen a UFO. So it makes me skeptical. Um, because it's a lot of fun. I mean, I find UFOs fascinating. My next book, The Defector, in fact, uh, takes place at Area 51. Mm -hmm. And, and so, uh, to me, it's, it's, it's inspirational and interesting. And because of the size of the universe, I mean, there must be life somewhere else. But I, I just try and deal with the evidence that's actually there in front of me and not just wishful stuff. And most people that are looking at those heads up display tapes and the various, you know, things that you see on the internet. I mean, I'm deeply expert in those things. I spent my whole life working in that technical area. And yet I listen to, you know, people who have a webcast or something and they're drawing conclusions about what they're seeing. And the recent hubbub about balloons in North America and how, you know, UFO balloons and we're going to use our fighters to shoot them down. And they're just a bunch of balloons. And some of them may have come from China for, you know, electronic intelligence gathering and, and nefarious. Like, a lot of them were just like hobby balloons or, you know, weather balloons and such. But when you look at them in somebody's radar display, you know, it's hard to tell what they are to the point that NORAD shot some of them down. So you've got to somehow filter out uh, evidence-based reality with human inaccurate perceptions and then a lot of wishful thinking. And uh, I, I am confident that we are not alone in the universe, but I'm also confident that we have yet to see any conclusive evidence of it. Uh, there's lots of unidentified things flying around, but it doesn't make inherent sense to me to, because I don't know what they are, to immediately assume that they must be intelligent life from another solar system. That's just, that's an irrational step to me. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, I just haven't seen any evidence, despite my lifetime of working in that area, that, that gives me reason to think that it's true. How do you explain some of those descriptions and sightings and videos and even eyewitness stuff from, from pilots, which aren't exactly, you know, in fantasy world, about the describing some of these things. So it's not just the electronic displays, but it's their own visuals. And it's not just one or two, it seems to be six and eight and 10 and 12 and I- Well, I, I think what you forget is the millions of flight hours of people who didn't see those things. You know, if you just focus on the the very singular events of people seeing something and just going, I, I just can't figure out what it is I'm looking at here. Um, 
you have to weigh that against the enormous vast majority of people who have been looking at the same space and seen nothing for all that time you know if, if otherwise you're getting a very inaccurate balanced perception of of the reality of what's actually going on and and often i i've looked at stuff when i'm flying going, what the heck is that i can't really tell and then maybe i go oh shoot it's a contrail but boy it sure didn't look like a contrail to me when i first looked the lighting or the angle it was just so weird or oh that's god i went by a, a helicopter at eighteen thousand feet once i was like what the heck is a helicopter doing up here at eighteen thousand feet it sure didn't look like that from a distance and and so i i haven't spoken to uh, some of those pilots who have the most compelling stories. So I don't know. Um, but they don't have an answer. All they have are questions. And so I try and help, or at least convince myself with an answer that, that balances out with the rest of reality. But, I, I, but I, I'm the first to admit, I don't know all the answers. And the more we discover, the, you know, the more we know. So, uh, so uh, nobody really knows. And I think it's really important to be curious and questioning and, and to look into it. And so that's why, you know, the U.S. government's doing that and other governments. That's why NASA has some people looking into it. But what they keep concluding is uh, we're not sure what it was, but we're pretty much convinced it didn't come from, you know, Beta Centauri. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, He's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true. And you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year is going to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, 
I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy, apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?